Hello and welcome to another episode of Tudor. I hardly know her. Me too. I don't know her either. Well, I hope you know her because you're you're pretty. I you know what? Every week I say that I'm the host, <laughs> but I'm definitely not the host. You are. You, you are most it. certainly the host, Emily. You start it though, because the one time yeah. I tried starting it, it was really awkward. Do you want to try starting this one? Sure. All right. All right. All right. Everyone, we're. we're Pretend like the first, I don't know, 20 seconds of banner didn't happen. Emily is going to introduce this episode, okay? So, so. Host, host. <laughs> am, I, am I starting now? Yeah, do it, do it. Hi, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you don't night, even introduce night. the name of the show or I'm. Uh, you know what? I think it's better I keep doing this. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't know why I started doing a little bit of an Australian accent, but I think I should continue it. What do you All guys right. think? Play the ball where it lies. Let's see how it plays out for him, Cotton. <laughs> My name's Loyal Hemsworth. <laughs> bait and tackle. Loyal Hemsworth, bait and tackle. You might know my brother as Chris or Liam. But no, I'm, I'm loyal. <laughs> okay, that's about as good as it gets. Okay, so <laughs> before we, we offend our episode. one Australian listener, oh, yeah, sorry, Australian, I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> yeah, that by was calling you Australian. incredibly insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, two. she was just the only one who who messaged us. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Emily. Anyway, hi guys. How are you doing today? I'm well. I'm actually doing very well because somebody. On our Facebook page, sent me a delightful, delightful video, and I'm gonna play it for you guys. Are you Are you ready? You don't I need. I mean, to it doesn't really help me, but <laughs> go for it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's It's a song, and it's by something called Horrible Histories, and it's a song called Ruthless Rulers, and it goes through every ruler of England. So I'm going to play the first little bit of it, and then I'll fast forward to the chorus, because that's where they teach you the order of the rulers. Okay. And, okay, so I'm going to play a little bit of it. This is the order it goes in, and you're going to love this, because we complain about the names all the time. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. William, William, Henry, Stephen, Henry, Richard, John. I'm sorry, what was that name? Oh, George, okay. Just want to make sure that I heard that right. <laughs> but it looks like there was only one Stephen. The a one th- true Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I am the only Stephen. Yeah, so it looks first like... First and only of his name. <laughs> first of his... Stephen, first of his name. Yeah, and the ca- the song is super catchy because it go- it's like a bunch of actors in historical costume... And they're just kind of bouncing around like hicks, going, mm-hmm. Will- <laughs> William, William, Henry, Stephen, William, Richard, John, oi! Have you ever seen Tangled? Yeah. So you know the scene of all the people in the bar dancing, singing? I'm just why, That's like why it makes me think of every time I <laughs> hear so it. Fun. Like, I have, I've had it stuck in my head since I looked it up this morning. <laughs> and, and who do we have to thank for that? Uh, let me find uh, someone. Her, I think her name is Bronwyn. Um... <laughs> Um, Bronwyn Cole. So thank you that for that like because it made me so happy. I'm teasing. Thank, thank you very much for sending that to us. Okay, but that did teach me this week's fun fact to start the episode. Oh, that's right. We have fun facts now. Yeah, so I started, I just wanted to look up Horrible Histories and see what it actually was because I'd never heard of it before. Uh, okay, I learned through a little bit of perusing earlier that apparently at one point... Queen Elizabeth ordered a painter to just basically repaint a portrait that she really liked of herself instead of doing one true to life. She's like, no, no, that's my favorite. Just repaint that one. And he was like, oh, okay. And I guess she was really picky about her portraits. It's probably from the and smallpox that's your scars. Weird history of the day. 
How and lazy, though. I think that's all. All right. Now, Emily, who, we, who, who are we learning about in the Tudor lineage today? Today's discussion will be Mary, Queen of Scots. Oh, great Scots. So, <clears throat> you know how we talked about uh, doing an episode about rain? Mm-hmm. So, I watched the entirety of the first episode. Because I had started to watch it a couple years ago, and I was like, oh, cool, a whole show about Mary, Queen of Scots. And then I got halfway through, and I was like, well, I'm done. And so I actually watched the entirety of the first episode. <laughs> and I think Jeff was amused. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it might, because we haven't watched any. I think what I'll do is watch the first couple episodes and then watch the last couple episodes of each season. But I'm very interested in how they ended the show because Mary was executed. <laughs> <laughs> this is a CW show. Although they did have Supernatural's mom get on fire on the ceiling, so maybe they won't squirm away from a bloody execution. I just I, I just can only assume that she runs away with her vampire boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> They're werewolves in Scotland, okay, Garrett? <laughs> The Werewolves of Scotland, isn't that that song by that one guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, it sounds like a cool song. I would totally listen. That sounds like a, uh, what's that Boston? Dropkick Murphys. That sounds like something Dropkick Murphys would, would sing about. The Werewolves of Scotland. <laughs> so are you, are you guys ready to learn? Nope. Yes, yes. Nope, sorry. <laughs> I'm done. I have, I have learn me something good, knowledge. Emily. Yeah, now I'm actually really curious to hear about the actual Mary Queen of Scots history not cw presents well, her history i'm probably going to interject a couple of things about rain just on that first episode because i've only ever seen the first episode so see jeff has a leg up on me because he watched those episodes with emily mm -hmm. he does it was and i'm sure you got to i'm sure you had like a front row seat to emily saying no that's not what happened no <laughs> so no that was actually like the first was like point... five seconds of the yeah, episode yeah <laughs> there was a point where something ridiculous happened and I just put my hands up to my face and like glared at the screen and Jeff just started laughing. Here's the thing though, if it's as bad as you say, I think I'd love it because listeners, <laughs> little thing you may not know about me is I love fan fiction. Garrett's favorite favorite movie is The Room. Oh my god. I lo I love I love horrible bad <laughs> things. I love and I love fan fiction. So Rain just seems like it's fan fiction. It, yes, I, yes. That really, that really kind of actually puts a like yeah. nails it right on top of the head. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I guess the actual show, The Tudors, is kind of fan fiction. No, but no. Probably, probably better than Rain is. Oh, there's history in Tudors. Like I, I keep trying to open, like to be like, I'm open minded to this. I'll, I'll accept the discrepancies. Except. What did I say hmm. about it? Oh. I was like, no, 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 hold on. Let's not get to that yet. Like, okay, I, I do want to talk about that. Brain episode. I do want to talk about that, but we'll mention it later, so it can people can see my development as I watch Rain. Okay, are you, are you guys ready? Okay. okay. Maybe this let's, should be a thing that we include in every episode, where we each watch a little bit of the show, like throughout, and it'll be like just tapped into each and every episode we do. <laughs> You know, we've had a pretty good track record with the show so far. Why why ruin it? Although, I know you're coming down on Rain pretty hard. I don't know. Maybe some of our listeners really like Rain. Um, well, my one of my friends pointed out, she's like, I think it's hilarious that you like, that you hate Rain, but you watch that show Salem. Um, but yeah, li uh, listeners, if you guys like Rain, write us in. Let us know how you feel about the show. And, and then like, stop listening to my podcast. And, and her problems with the show, or if you can see past whatever faults that it may have. I've never seen an episode. I'm supposed to be watching some episodes so we can talk about them. I Please am actually start. really curious about other, like our listeners of those who do watch it and like their views of how here's, like of how they watch it here's what i listeners do you watch it and what's wrong with you here <laughs> <laughs> just kidding i have experienced that people who genuinely like the tutors do not like rain and people who the see the rain is for somebody who really liked gossip girl and wants to feel like they're interested in history that's there we go let's go with that but this episode is not about rain. This episode is about Mary, Queen of Scots, the actual well, person. I mean, I guess it's kind of about rain, but... I mean, we'll talk about rain. 
Yeah. All anyway. right. Are you ready? So Mary, Queen of Scots, she was born December 8th, 1542. So she was nine years younger than Queen Elizabeth. And she died February 8th, 1587. So she was 44 years old. And her de- her birth was not that great. So her father was James V of Scotland. And James V was the grandson of Henry VIII's sister. So Mary was Henry VIII's great niece. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. So Mary, Queen of Scots... She was born. She was the great niece of Henry VIII. Um, Scotland didn't have a really good time producing heirs. Uh, There usually just seemed to be one for a couple of generations. So James V was fighting in a battle when he was told that his long-anticipated son was a daughter. And he died. So... (laughs) (laughs) Just (laughs) killed over on his horse. Um, it's rumored that he said basic. He literally said, "Woe is me," so I think he was the original drama queen. I was gonna say, what a, what a diva. <laughs> he was. A diva. Oh, woe is me. He said the dynasty, uh, began with a lass and now will end with a lass, and it was because. Buddy, uh, you know you can have more than one, right? Well, he died. Well, he could have. It tried. was supposed to be like a. No, it was supposed to be like a, a Nostradamus predicting the future thing, and he was right. But it wasn't for a couple more generations that his family lost the throne. But his mm. family claimed the throne when, um, you know, you know Braveheart, Mel Gibson's character. Never seen it, but William Wallace, yeah. Uh, he was fighting for Robert the Bruce. And Robert the Bruce is married the Stuarts, and that's how they got the throne. So anyway, little backstory for that. Okay. So uh, Diva James the Fifth was like, "Woe is me! Oh no, I have a daughter. Now oh, I know how agony, agony, feels. agony, agony, agony." Oh. Yeah, and then he died like a couple days later. His daughter was six days old, and she became the queen. Uh, her mother was Mary of Guise. She was French because Scotland and France were BFFs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so her mother acted as regent for most of her reign. There was some other guy who was in power for a bit, but his mother, w- his her mother, like took over. Um, when she was a kid, that's when Henry VIII was still alive, and Henry VIII was like, "Hey, it would be so convenient if you married my son Edward, and then your children could take over both kingdoms, and there would be peace and prosperity and love." And the Catholic Scots were like, mm, your country's in a little bit of turmoil, so I'm going to say no. And then Henry was PO'd, and then there was the rough wooing, and he said, burn everything to the ground. So, they responded by betrothing Mary to the French Dauphin when he was five. Oh, no, when she was five. He was only three. So, they got this shit taken care of. Wouldn't it be nice to grow up being like... I don't have to worry about finding a soulmate. I just get to marry this guy for... My soulmate was decided for me. (laughs) Yeah. So cute. Yeah, that's totally a great idea. It so works. Also, what if he grows up to be a total (laughs) uggo? So uh, when she was five, she was sent to France for her safety. And this is my first issue with Rain. It literally opens with fucking Nostradamus, by the way. And uh, then it goes to a scene of Mary at at a convent saying that when she was nine years old, she was sent to a French convent for her safekeeping until she could marry the French Dauphin. I, 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 I don't I don't even know where to start with this one because I don't understand even. I just don't understand why that choice was made. <laughs> what, like, uh, uh, okay, so anyway, uh, okay. Breathe, Emily, breathe. So she was not sent. She had nothing to do with the convent. She was 
sent to France and she grew up with her husband. They were, they knew each other as children. They loved, they like just grew up being friends. So that's better than a lot of marriage treaties had it in those days. Uh, she went with the four Marys. She had four maid maidens, like, like what we've talked about before traveling mm-hmm. with her and they were all called Mary. There was Mary Fleming, Mary Seton, Mary Bre- Me- Beaton, and Mary Livingstone. Um, and they were devoted to her very much. They stayed with her through imprisonment and her execution. So this is just another... More Marys! She rolled with a tight crew. What? She rolled with a tight crew it was, is what yeah, you're it saying. Was, it was her posse. Her entourage. Yeah. Josh, where's Turtle? Okay, hold on. <laughs> New show idea. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we come up with so many good shows? I bet you this is how Hollywood works. Yeah. Except with way less cocaine. And more Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have Adam Sandler in a lot. <laughs> uh, Adam okay. Sandler stars in <laughs> the four 1600s Marys. No. Entourage. This is it. Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Okay. Is Adam Henry Sandler VIII. dresses up as a woman, like in Some Like It Hot, to escape something happening in England. And he ends okay. up as part of Mary's entourage. And then in some wacky hijinks, all the other Marys die. So he has to pretend to be all four Marys. Oh, that's good. Yes. And you yeah. know this is you know this will become a movie. <laughs> Marry Me, starring Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're good guys. Who's the hottest Hollywood exec right now? And why isn't he calling us? <laughs> you know what? Why isn't she calling us? I'm assuming it's a woman. Screw the yeah. patriarchy. Kathleen Kennedy, give us a call. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. So, because Mary, Queen of Scots, was the queen of her own country, plus the future queen of England, or of Scot, France, she was given precedence at the French court where she grew up over even the French king's daughters. So, the precedence went basically Henry II, his wife Catherine de de Medici, his son Francis, and then then Mary. Oh my God, I can't keep anyone straight. All right, you got that? Now you know how I feel. I know. <laughs> so she grew up uh, with the full education of a French princess. She learned Latin, Italian, Greek, um, and interestingly, Spanish. But with not French, strangely enough. <laughs> None of them speak French. It's very strange. Um, she also knew how to dance, sing, or she, she was also taught how to dance, sing, and play the lute. Uh, so when she was seven, her mother. Uh, it's like hos- I'm just visualizing like when you learn the recorder as a kid, <laughs> just playing hot, just cross hot cross buns all day. So when she was seven, her mother married a Guise, visited her, and uh, the Guise family of France they were very powerful. One of ca- uh, Mary's uncles was a cardinal. The others were very strongly, strong politicians. So her mother visited when she was seven. Um, and that was actually the last time she saw her mother because she died shortly after. So her dad passed away when she was only six days old. Six days old. And then her mom. When, like, she, was seven. when she was seven years old. Oh, yeah. man. You know, if you think about it, she's got a very similar life to Edward. Of, Engl- of Edward the Sixth of England, because oh, yeah. his mom died when she was twelve, when he was twelve days old, and his so father much died they could when relate he was nine. On. What? So much they could relate on. I know they would have been perfect together, you know, except the Protestant thing. So, in 1558, she finally married the Dauphin, so she was um, 16. They had a very extravagant wedding in Notre Dame. And that was the same year of Elizabeth's succession of the throne. So, Mary had a claim to the English throne. 
sort of. Henry VIII's will barred her from taking the throne because he claimed since she was born out of England, she, she couldn't qualify or any of that bloodline couldn't qualify for it. But all of the people in England who were, who were Catholic obviously wanted a Catholic queen and they thought of Elizabeth as a bastard. So that was a huge point of contention for them. So having such an extravagant wedding the same year Elizabeth had an extravagant coronation. That was uh, planned that way. Um, so a couple, about 20 days before her wedding, there was an interesting document Mary signed, which she probably shouldn't have. And it was a secret document. And it essentially gave Scotland and England, because she claimed being queen of England as well, to France if she died without children. So if she and France is married and then she died within a couple of months, Scotland and England would have gone to France. So that would have been a huge win. But I think I read something that said that that had actually, she'd been tricked into signing it. And a bunch of the nobles in Scotland were PO'd about it. So you didn't read the fine print? No. <laughs> uh, so Mary was described as beautiful, regal, and ex- exceptionally kind-hearted. Her husband Francis II was less so. He was short, he had a stutter, and he was pretty sick the, most of his life. Now we get to the good part. <laughs> you ready for this, Garrett? When Mary Tudor died, Henry II of France was like, yeah, you're totally the queen. Take the royal arms of England. And then not only did the Catholic subjects in England want her, but most of Catholic Europe wanted her because nobody really recognized Elizabeth as queen. So Elizabeth was not happy. However, a couple months after she got married, her father-in-law died. This was the king who died from jousting. Remember when we talked about that? Oh, right. Yeah. He was the one who that got like way back stabbed when. in the face. Oh. And he died. It gets better. Uh, so Mary and Francis became king, king and queen of France. So at that point... Elizabeth was queen of France, England, and Scotland, and I want to say, oh, Ireland, too. So she was the queen right, of... Was that when her dad was just bored and, like... That was when Henry VIII was bored. Yeah, or that's or when... the seventh. One of those Henrys. Henry VIII. Yeah, I was going to say, Henry yeah. VIII was like, I'm bored. Yeah. I want Ireland. So Mary of Guise passed away a couple months after Henry II passed away, and then six months later, Mary, uh, Mary of Scots husband francis the second passed away take a guess how he died you'll never do it and i'm so excited to to tell you what it is <sighs> not it's, barrel it's of wine ridiculous it was a bees. natural just lots of <laughs> bees <laughs> <laughs> somehow more ridiculous than that oh man not ridiculous and like something goofy happened it was just a dumb freaking way to die like, of the things that can kill you, this is probably bottom of the list. Try to shoot this apple off my head. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how did he die? He died from an ear infection. <laughs> oh. Like, Aww. isn't that isn't that the most... So minuscule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his dad died in a ba- ball or joust. Ja- my uh, father joust. died while getting a, a freaking lance like, to the face. And ear hurts. Blech. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear very well. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're dead. For all the hypochondriacs out there, here's another thing to fear. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> How so, old was he? Sh- uh, or at least, like, what time? Uh, um, well, that was 1560, and he was born in 1545. Wait. So <laughs> he would have been 15. Yeah, because he was two years younger than then. So he was 15? Yeah. He was only 15? Jeez. So. Shoot. Now I got now I'm just basing that off of some other math. All these young royals are dropping like flies, man. I know. Uh hold on, let me look this up quickly just to make sure we're giving accurate facts. I can't look around. Uh King Francis. <laughs> Uh, 1444 to 1560. So, so yeah. Like 16. Yeah. 
Jeez, but still young. Yeah. Yep. So, boo. No wonder the, the like, average lifespan back then was so small. Like 30? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's like there were still people who did at least live to be in their 60s and 70s. Yeah, they were just few and far between. Margaret Beaufort lived forever. <laughs> that old bat refused to die. <laughs> uh, okay, so she left. Since she wasn't pregnant, she left for Scotland. Whoops. And she never really expected to be in Scotland. She figured she and Francis would rule Scotland from France without ever having to step foot in it. So this was unexpected, to say the least. So she arrived in August of 1561. And she was very tolerant for that time since there was all the religious upheaval happening throughout Europe. Um, It was really cool to see a ruler so tolerant. But that kind of made, made her a lot of noble enemies. So she herself was Catholic, but she decreed and stuck to this, unlike Mary and Elizabeth. Uh, you can rule however you want. However your conscience says you want to worship God, you can worship God. So, oh. uh-huh. Every subject worships they chose Bloody Mary. That's pretty progressive of her. It was. And it was, I mean, this was right after the reign of, of Mary Tudor. So it's interesting to think about how she saw that play out in England. It was like, I think maybe I'll we should have kill everyone for being a certain yeah. religion. So she was very tolerant. Right. And so yeah, how how did everyone like respond to that though? Actually, all of the the common people they were extremely joyful. They they loved their new queen. She was so tolerant and she was a good queen to them. However, cool. She oh. attempted to strengthen the crown against the nobles who had been notoriously difficult for generations. And that ended up being her downfall. So no matter, no matter what, even though she was loved throughout Scotland by common people, the nobles didn't like her. So because she was being all progressive and different, all of her progression. So yeah, she was very kind hearted. That's part of like, there's nothing. I mean, she was just kind of weak. That's, and it wasn't weak. Like a, she was smart, but I don't think she ever thought she'd be in actively involved in Scottish rule. I thought it'd she be. Thought she thought she'd probably be. Like, she like thought she was going to be a queen to a king rather than having to be almost, the one really in power. Almost, yeah. So uh, it was really interesting. And she and Elizabeth had pretty parallel lives, except they grew up so differently. Mary grew up knowing, I'm going to be queen. I am queen. Nothing can be done about this. And her rule, her uh, power, her point of power was just chaos. Well, like we Elizabeth, talked about, well, like we talked about Elizabeth, how Elizabeth like intentionally really didn't get married to a person, right? Because she knew she would have to, right. like, She had to have let him rule, right? Um, I mean, but beyond that, like Elizabeth didn't expect, didn't. She may have hoped to become queen one day, but she didn't expect it, I don't think. Mm-hmm. So to, for her to become queen, like, she really was like, all right, well, now I'm going to earn it. No, well, no, she earned it way before she became queen. But still, there was a, a big difference in those two as, as parallel as their lives ran. So um, she wanted to be as peaceful as possible with France, England, and Spain, which were the some of the biggest... England and or Spain and France were the biggest powers in Europe. So, uh, and France or and England was Scotland's neighbor on an island. So, uh, she she kept peace with them, tried to stay out of every bit of drama, but she didn't do it through treaty. She just kind of did it through like, I'm good, I'm back here, everything's fine, we're we're good. So that. Um, so she just tried to keep Scotland uninvolved. And that was another reason the common people loved her. It's because she didn't need to raise taxes for wars that had nothing to do with their country. Um, so Henry VIII's relatives liked to get married. So she married her second husband, Lord Darnley. Ugh. Darnley. Some of these names are so British. Uh, Henry Stuart. So, Henry VIII's sister, Margaret, okay, she went to Scotland to marry the king of Scotland. She had one son from him and then a daughter from another marriage. 
that daughter gave birth to Henry. S- that daughter gave birth to Henry Stewart, Lord Darnley. Mary, Queen of Scots, was related to her first son. Do so, you guys got that? So they're cousins. Yes. Cousins through half siblings. Got it? Gotcha. As such, they both had claims to the English throne. So Elizabeth wasn't happy about that. And uh, it caused chaos. Darnley was kind of a little asshole. Like he was as douchey as his name makes him sound. All he wanted. Lord Darnley. Right. So Lord Darnley. He wanted some power, honey. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mary said no. She's like, no, nah, I'm good. We're fine. Uh, so his response. Mary was very close with her uh, secretary, who is a man. And he was, uh, I think, Italian or some something of that ilk. And... Uh, he, he didn't have undue influence over her. So Mary was six months pregnant with hers and Darnley's child. And she and her secretary, I, I didn't write his name down because it was complicated and I knew I'd butcher it. Uh, let's call him Romeo. Frankie. No, Romeo. It's gotta be Italian like. So Romeo. I like Frankie better. Okay, fine. Frankie. So thank you. Frankie and Mary were sitting in in her apartments with some of her ladies and they were just enjoying themselves, having some fun when some nobles, including Darnley, her husband and the father of her unborn child, broke into the apartments and stabbed the secretary to death in front of her. Jesus Christ. Darnley wanted to scare her into having a miscarriage, which in those days, miscarriages could mean death so that he could become the regent. It wouldn't have lasted. He was an idiot, but that was his hope. At least that scumbag that the, the reason behind why he did it. That was just in one piece. I read, I don't know if it's just suggested or if it's an actual fact, but he still murdered the dude in front of her. Like, it was a violent, bloody death. And it was one of her very good friends. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, so, the nobles kept Mary prisoner. And then Darnley was like, Oh, I feel bad. And Mary was like, Hun, Oh, honey. Sorry I stabbed your honey, buddy. I wish we could. I wish we could be together forever. So she she wooed Darnley into helping her escape. So the man who murdered her BFF. And uh, so he helped her escape. And that's when she gave birth to James the sixth of England and James. Uh, I'm sorry, James the sixth of Scotland. Uh. So the nobles were all pissed at Darnley because they had the queen in their power. They could have made her do anything. And Darnley was the one, the reason she escaped. So, uh, they blew the, up his the house. The queen didn't have like a guard or like people loyal to her that could have like saved her or stopped any of this shit from happening. Uh, they were nobles. Like she might've had a bodyguards, but the nobles were the ones who made up court. Mm. Right. So uh, the nobles were pissed at Darnley, so they blew up his house. So so li- literally all of the nobles were against her. She didn't have anybody on her side. A really. lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Not every uh, single one, but a lot. Okay. So when Darnley was just chilling in his house in February of 1567, the nobles were like, Okay, well, we'll just make it explode. And somehow Darnley didn't get exploded. (laughs) But they did find his strangled body in a garden. How did they explode it? Gunpowder. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting they have guns back then. (laughs) (laughs) They just put a ton of Glocks under (laughs) the room he was in. (laughs) And then threw some C4 at it. Yeah, and then tactical nuke. (laughs) <laughs> right through his window. <laughs> and that's what caused the nuclear winter of the 1600s. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been listening to us, we're going to start making our own history. <laughs> Just like Inspired rain. by rain, we're making our fan fiction right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, we can't get worse than rain. Again, if you like rain, we're sorry. No, I'm not. Emily might not Stop be, watching rain. <laughs> okay. I haven't watched it yet. I might like it. We'll no, see. You won't like No. See, Garrett, the problem is... Rain is a good show if you're like a teenager or if you're just really into those hyper dramatic CW shows like Gossip Girl. Well, both of those things apply to me. Okay. Well, enjoy that, you teenage girl. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so after she was widowed because her husband was blown up and then strangled. Well, yeah, you said strangled. What was that all about? They so just found him strangled? He didn't get blown up properly, and so somebody was like, all right, I'll make sure the How job gets done. How do you mess up an explosion? It's kind of big. Yeah, I, don't, I think he just wasn't where he was supposed to be. Ah. Uh, yeah. He was in the loo. So he probably got burned or something. He was just a little bit off of that giant red X that they painted. <laughs> 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 Can you stand on that Roman numeral 10, please? I'm doing an experiment. <laughs> it's like... He's like the road runner. <laughs> <laughs> me, me. <laughs> He's like the road runner mixed with Rasputin. So they try dropping an anvil on his head, <laughs> blowing up his house, <laughs> making him run into a painted wall. For anybody who doesn't understand the Rasputin reference, Rasputin from the Fox Anastasia movie was a real character. <laughs> he was the advisor to Tsar Nicholas, who died in a bloody revolution. And he was assassinated by being poisoned, shot, stabbed. Castrated. Ca was he ca castrated and then drowned? It took a lot to kill him. It was the actual drowning that actually finally killed him. And yet they're still not sure about that. Mm. Like he may not. I read something that suggested that he had a bullet between the eyes. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. Not that that, no, no, not that that didn't kill him. Not that he was shot in the brain and he, like, zombied his way out of it. No. There's a suggestion that he was assassinated with a bullet between the eyes and then all of the extra stuff was made up by whoever assassinated him. Gotcha. Yeah. But either way, poison shot, stabbed, drowned, violent. Divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded <laughs> shot stabbed drowned. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, okay, so Mary, when her husband was shot, stabbed, beheaded, died. At what time Poison. period was this? 1567. So only seven years after the first husband. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah, Why good job. You're doing a good job. Why can't I ever find a good man? Uh... Mary ended up six miles away from Edinburgh. And also, does all this stuff happen on rain? I don't know, but I really hope it does because I want to see how they're going to make that sexy. What, the strangling in his garden and being blown up? Well, okay, I have an idea for what they would do. I don't know how much it, like, I'm just not sure how accurate. Well, I strangulation can kind of be sexy. Okay, we're getting off topic. <laughs> 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 okay, so you're into that. No judgment. Uh, so she agreed to meet. She agreed to go to a castle called Dunbar for her safety when she was asked by someone named Bothwell. That's another very English name for you. So she agreed. But that kind of brought up some rumors. Some people suggested that she had been a part of the murder of Darnley so that she could marry Bothwell. Other reports have said that... I'm pretty sure it was Mary, Queen of Scots. Other reports said that after her husband was murdered, Bothwell raped her and she got pregnant so she had to marry him. Either way, they ended up married. Not sure how it happened, but it did. Uh, and the nobles said that they would accept Bothwell as their overlord. So they're like, yeah, we approve. Like, everything will be peaceful. And then they're like, just kidding. We don't like Bothwell. So they were met by some rebel forces. And they demanded Mary abandon Bothwell. And she was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're cool. And so she turned herself over, 
once again to just avoid fighting. She just wanted peace. The poor woman. She was like, please stop. So she was taken as a prisoner to Loch Laven Castle. And that's Scottish, so it's probably something like Loch Laven. Okay, I think I did that pretty well. Hold on. I think you just had something caught in your throat. Mm. Don't need a drink. Okay, so in that year, she was forced to abdicate the throne in favor of her infant son. So apparently Scotland just really liked being ruled by infants for a long, long time. Actually, that would make sense because it meant the nobles were ruling. Got it? Got it. Yep. Okay. So her half-brother, the her half-brother who was also a bastard, not by Bessie. Oh, my God. What? Uh, I'm 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 sorry. I'm reading up on some of these ca- on some of these people as you're talking about them. First of all, Henry Stewart, Lord Darnley. Yeah. Looks weird as hell. <laughs> Probably. Second of all, um, reading about him stabbing homeboy says that he. Oh, David Rizzio. Okay. That that was that was the the secretary's name. Oh okay. Why didn't I write um, that? He was stabbed 56 times. Oh, yeah. Excessive much? I mean, excessive is 20. <laughs> excessive is like 10. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, the police call excessive? Also, I'm visualizing, the, I'm trying to think of the g- one person who's counting the stabs as they're going. <laughs> one, one, two, two three, three ah, four. Ah, it's like. Ah. <laughs> 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 anyway. Anyway. Okay, so after she was forced to ab- to abdicate the throne, her half brother, who was a bastard, the Earl of Moray, became the protector, and he was murdered three years later. And then the next regents were also murdered. So there was just all kinds of murder happening in Scotland. You get murdered. You get murdered. Everybody, Everybody gets murdered. Gets murdered. So, in uh, 1568, okay, so Mary was accused, as I said, of being involved in her second husband's death, but one of the nobles in 1568 was being executed, and beforehand, he was doing his speech, and he uh, essentially declared her innocent of Darnley's murder, so she won a lot of sympathy for that. So, uh a half-brother of the guy who was keeping her captive in one of the castles helped her escape after 10 months of captivity. And there was a battle at Dumbarton. And uh, she lost. And she fled. So she was like, okay, well, I'm a woman. I'm a queen. I'll go to my cousin Elizabeth, who will surely help me win back the monarchy. Elizabeth was sympathetic. She did want to help her cousin take back her kingdom. However, she was very cautious. Very, very cautious. So when she arrived in England in 1568, so she wasn't, I mean, think about that. She arrived in 1562, 1561 to Scotland. So she lasted seven years. So... Uh, when she arrived, Elizabeth kept her guarded in nor- in the north. She didn't, I don't think she was a captive at that point, but she did keep her guarded. So Elizabeth's struggle was essentially, she is my kinswoman and she is a fellow queen. I should do what I can to help her. But she's also Catholic and therefore she's uh, a, a very valid competitor for my throne. And a lot of people are supporting her. So I need to tread carefully. So what she did was uh, she had her guilt investigated with the Darnley thing again. And her investigators essentially said she's not guilty. She didn't do it. But uh, that wasn't enough for Elizabeth to risk her life by freeing her. So the conservatives of England, who were all Catholics... They wanted her to marry the Duke of Norfolk, who was, the Norfolk family was uh, very Catholic as well. Elizabeth said no, it was too dangerous. Um, 
And she was moved prison to prison. And, of course, Mary tried to plot an escape. And that didn't happen. However, in October of 1586, so 15-ish years later, almost 20 years later, after she arrived, she was put on trial for apparently plotting to kill Elizabeth. Jesus. Her trial only lasted two days, and she was found guilty, of course. Why Why did they think she was trying to kill Elizabeth? Uh, I think that what it was was that the nobles and Elizabeth's counselors, they saw the very real risk of keeping Mary alive. So gotcha. they so were like, like, oh, she's trying to kill the queen. Kill her. Yeah. So they were like, you know what? We could be as good as Henry VIII about making shit up. So I think hey, she, it worked for him, right? Yeah. So I think she tried to kill her. And nothing bad ever happened. Nothing ever. Nothing bad. So uh, Mary was very brave. She knew she was going to die. She knew she was going to be found guilty. But she pled very without any sort of support. She had no support. She pled to Elizabeth, I would never try to harm you. You're my cousin, a fellow queen, yada, yada. So How does Rain make this sexy? Probably like a, a lesbian. My cousin, I assure you. Something like that. that. I am most innocent. Like probably an exotic striptease. How could I ever show you? Why is she Captain Kirk? My cousin, <laughs> I must prove to you my innocence. Elizabeth. But I don't know how. Well, Jeff, you just sounded like Nick Cage impersonating Captain yeah. Kirk. Also, yes. Okay. New movie idea. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you going to continue that? No, I think we know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was in October when she was found guilty. But she kind of just languished until February. And on February 7th, she was told the next morning she would be executed. So here's hey, that wasn't too long ago. It was not. No. So here's the thing. Uh, Elizabeth didn't want to kill her. She didn't want... She agonized over it. I think we talked about this in the last episode, but I want to reiterate it. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth had no desire to kill her cousin and a fellow queen. She agonized over it because she knew as a ruler it had to be done to keep herself safe. But as a person, she couldn't do it. So her secretary brought her the letter that would that Elizabeth would have to sign to have her executed. She signed it but told her secretary, do not take this anywhere. Do not serve this warrant. And he Oh, yeah, you did talk about right, this. He did anyway. So, the day of Elizabeth or the day of Mary's execution, she the day before she sl- she was awake until two in the morning, writing out a will. She provided very well for the people who'd taken care of her throughout her years. Um, and then the morning of her execution, this is sad. She asked for her Champlain, chaplain, who would be the guy who'd absolve her of her sins as a Catholic. I would have asked for champagne. She did not ask for champagne, but her chaplain should have. And she was told, no, you cannot have this. So that, as a strict Catholic, must have been devastating. So her execution is well recorded. Uh, she went and made a speech, essentially saying, I love my, I love the Queen of England. I would never, she, you know, probably said the same old thing, like, I love her. She's a good person, yada, yada. So. She was wearing a black dress, and when she removed her top dress, which is what you do when you're about to be executed as a woman, you you remove as many layers as possible. She was wearing a red petticoat, and red is the sign of a Catholic martyr. So she made it very clear that she was being killed for being Catholic, which essentially she was. Uh, So she was executed, and the guy, the executioner, Hit the top of her head first before he hit her neck. Oh. And when he hit the top of her head, she was heard to say, sweet Jesus. And then he hit her neck, so she was decapitated. And he held up her head, 
as you're supposed to do. And she was wearing a wig. So her head what? fell and kind of rolled away. And she had a beloved dog that went with her through the prisons. And the dog had hidden under her skirts as she was executed. And when she was executed, the dog came out and kind of curled around her legs. Oh. It was very sad. And uh, Elizabeth sent Mary's son, James, a letter essentially saying, I'm very, very, very sorry. I didn't want this to be done. This was an accident. The death shouldn't have happened. Mm. Like it was a miscommunication. So that was the end of Mary, Queen of Scots. And I'm sure she would be thrilled to know that she was played as a... 20-year-old frivolous girl who liked to wear ball gowns and didn't know her any of her husband. Uh, Mary would be so upset about that. Is that Are okay? you complaining about rain again? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do you want to hear something awful about rain? Oh, uh, yes. I don't understand the outfits, Garrett. Like, I don't understand them. And Jeff gave me something that I can kind of accept. And I'm going to just try to remind myself of this. So in rain, they're wearing gowns you would see at the current Oscars or the Grammys. Oh, my God. These outfits. Are you looking them up or are you just making fun of me? Uh, no, I'm looking at them. Right? Okay, like as outfits, they're not bad. But as historical costumes, they make me want to cry. Jeff said... Oh, and the music also has, like, it sounds like Mumford and Sons all the time. What? Yeah. Okay. Why? Okay. Jeff. Okay. I'm looking at this one girl's dress, and I think she has some sort of weird necklace on, but looks like she just has a really wicked beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as we were watching this so episode, I started, like, as I was watching it, it made me think of, what if the movie A Knight's Tale was made into a TV series? Yeah. That it was probably the best way for me to describe it. It's like you watch Nice Tale, and it's like nowhere like actually accurate to the time. Like mm -hmm. they're playing like modern day music. Like you have Lowrider playing over this like medieval theme place, or the crowd is doing you know the "We Will Rock You" bounce <laughs> thing. So and that's yeah. what made me think of. That's like that's how it felt like watching it. Like way the way that all the actors were acting, dressing up, and. It was almost like they were doing a modern day version of history. It's like the best way I could think of it. Yeah, so I'll try and remember that, but it's still very it's just so very wrong, you know? Okay. Because it's not like they make a point of being like, "Oh, this is cutesy." Like like I'm looking at one re one screenshot of an episode and uh, this woman is wearing a strapless blue gown with ruffles. And I just don't get it. Like this, this picture I'm looking at, it genuinely looks like a wedding that would happen today. And I don't, I don't like it. And I don't think that's even me being a purist for like history shows or movies. I think it's just like, it's almost like they tried and they missed the mark. I can see what you're saying. I'm I'm looking at it all and I can I can definitely see what you're saying. Okay. It's just like and like the ones they do try and make historical, they still try and make them too modern. Like here's an oh my god, her wedding dress. That looks like a dress I could go and buy today. The the ones they do try and make look historical, they just add too much modern stuff to them like uh, glitter and sequins yeah l listeners we're still trying out different like little fun fun episodes out of our wheelhouse to where it's not just people Emily lecturing us to where we can different ways we can all interact and 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 pre present this show that we're doing so it, if you like the the um the secrets of the six wives or whatever that was called is that what it's called yes, yes. Man, I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you liked that episode or if you liked the uh, the Tudor commentary episode, let us know and let us know how you'd feel about a rain episode. I mean, y'all pretty much 
know Emily's feelings on the show in general, but it wouldn't be if but you'd that like one to see us be... like break down the episodes, let us know. Yeah. Please do. So it, or if you have any ideas or any other ways that we can tackle this, Actually, please, please, please feel free to share with us. We did get a request for episodes about culture in that time. So like fashion or religion and Stuff like that. So we're going to do some episodes. I'd be very like, interested in, in those. What'd you say? I said I'd be very interested in those. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about all that because I found out some really interesting things about how clothes were made in those days, like buttons and fastenings. That's, that's stuff that I'm always like, how do they How do they make, it make those clothes back then? It blows the my mind to see the intricacies of some of the embroidered clothes and the patterns woven because those right? were hand woven. I mean, maybe there was a single pattern set up so that it went quick, but it was still done by hand. Oh man, that's gonna be a good one. I I'm very excited to talk. It's it's gonna be so cool. They didn't have any form of a sewing machine, like like with a like a crank or something like that, where they made it easier to sew. It was all just with a hand and a Hands needle. Hands done. Wow, that is impressive. Yep. That would be actually fascinating you to know hear about. You know what's even more crazy to think about is think about the. The buildings that were made and the, the oh stone every time you I see like and the photos woodwork and the carvings. yeah every time I see any kind of photos or videos of, of like historical landmarks and locations yeah. the amount of detail that go into even like just even stuff just only in the last maybe like three hundred years yeah it's, it's pretty crazy. impressive like how much like you just go like around here in the United States like a downtown area of like an old building. The amount mm-hmm. of detail they went, even back then, that would have been difficult to have yeah, made. Yeah, it's, it's astounding. I love it. Where today, it's like now, it's all how minimal can we make things look. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I'm really excited to talk about that episode. Um, there's something else I wanted to say about Mary, Queen of Scots, or I don't think it was rain. I don't think it was a Because, yeah, she, she died very young. 44, not that young. Oh, I pre- kept thinking I wanted to well, be younger. Well, it's because she was in ca- she was in captivity in England for so long. Oh, okay. For twenty some odd years, for like twenty years. So See, that's why I, I I kept wanting to think that like she went to England and was only there for like maybe a few <laughs> oh, years and then I remember what away. I was gonna say. If anybody's <sighs> interested in in learning more about uh, the Scottish rulers of this time period, there's a series on Netflix called Gunpowder's Treason and Plot, and it's awesome. Please go check it out. I highly recommend it. It's got Michael Fassbender in it, in case you're into that. But it's also got some other like well-known him. actors. And it was really well done. Very, very. It was really good. It's not like a boring documentary. It's, it's, you know, uh, a, a, like actors acting, not just people talking to the camera. Uh, but it's really well done. It's a three-part miniseries. So it's called Gunpowder's Treason and Plot. Okay. All right. Oh, and it does involve like the f- the Guy Fox trying to blow up Parliament <laughs> thing. So, okay, somebody's really into V for Vendetta. <laughs> so, that's well, all right. That's that. That's all you got for us today, Emily. For today, yeah. All right. So here's something fun. <gasps> we are out of linear people to talk about wait what well we decided to talk about the rulers after henry and then we decided to do an episode after that about uh rain well yeah because like after elizabeth that's the end of tutors mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the end of the show we're done sorry bye bye goodbye everybody we're done. okay now uh, we talked about doing, oh man, now we can talk about Jane Boleyn. I'm so excited. No, maybe we'll do one of the culture episodes. Like the, how things were made. Man, where's my list of episodes we were going to do? Okay. Yeah. We were going to do. Let's not give it all away. Let's not give it all away. Yeah. We've got, wow, that sounds weird. Oh no. We were going to do a tutors and pop culture episode guys. Oh, yeah, that'll be a good one. And an episode about breaking from the church. Okay, never mind. We're still good. Okay, so we can either do a Tudors and Pop Culture or breaking from the church. What do you think? Hmm. What if we did a vote? 
breaking from the church and pop culture. Yeah, what if we did, what if uh, we uh, asked our listeners to decide for us? Uh, we'd have to do that for, through a Facebook or Twitter vote because yeah, they're probably going to read this after or listen to this after or like the day we're recording. Okay, but anyway, so, so that's it Emily. for today's episode. Thank you very much for everything you have brought to the table today about Mary Quinn of Scott. You are most... I liked it. It was a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, yeah, she she had some uh, interesting stuff she, going yeah. on in her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, her hubby got blowed up. He was a big old douchebag. <laughs> she just couldn't catch a break. Yeah. For some reason, her life was less depressing than Mary Tudor's, though. It seemed like her life was pretty depressing, though. But not as depressing as Mary Tudor. At least Mary Queen of Scots seemed a little bit more of a optimist about things than Mary was. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. Well. As usual, guys, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter's handle is thing. at Tudor Know Her. And rate and review, always and forever, pretty please. And all that stuff. Okay. 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 And hey, sometime, uh, if, if you want, send us a message. If you got any questions about anything or if you just want to talk to us, say hi. Just, just drop us a line on Facebook or Twitter. Tell me how we'll awesome I am. <laughs> That'd be cool, too. We lo- we, and, and just like with Emily talking about that song earlier in the episode, like she loves, that loves getting so like happy. cool new little things from you guys. And I like seeing it, too. So send it our way if you got anything cool that you'd like to share yes, with please. us. Yes, please. So, all right, guys. Well, until next time. Until next time. Okay. Okay. Shot, stabbed, poisoned, divorced, hung, died, drowned. beheaded, castrated, that, that, castrated, drowned. Castrated. Goodbye. Divorced, <laughs> beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.